So this is chapter 16, dates and times. Um, time can be diff difficult to work with since there are many factors that affect how long we consider an interval of time to be. Um, we have leap years, we have time zones, we have daylight savings time, and apparently the earth is slowly grinding to a halt. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully that's happening very, very slowly. Um, and that's going to be it for the existential dread part of the chapter. Um, we will use the packages tidyverse and lubridate. Um, lubridate is not part of the tidyverse. It's only used to work with time. And we'll also be using the New York City flights uh, data set to play with. So, okay, good. Load everything up. All right, so there are three types of date time data. Um, and they show up if you have a tibble um, with date being date, time being time, and then a date time, which is the date with the time, um, can show up as DTTM or this POSIX CT, I don't, how do I pronounce that? <laughs> I, I just say POSIX CT the very, okay. very rare times when I have to pronounce that. So. Okay. <laughs> I don't um, think there's any special uh, anything. Okay. So I was playing around with some Timbles and I couldn't get the DTTM to show up. I could only ever see the POSIX CT. Um, so R doesn't have a native class for storing times. You, if you need it, use the HMS package. And then um, the, probably the biggest tip in the chapter is always use the simplest type of data for your, or yes, data type for your date time needs. So keep it simple, silly. Um, to get the current date or date time, you can use today and you can use now. Um, and I just put a little uh, class in there so you can see that it's a date and it is that POSIX CT thing. <clears throat> and so uh, the first thing we go over is creating dates and times. And there's three ways to do that. Um, you can use a string, you can use individual components, and you can use an existing date time object. So from strings, um, we already looked at one way to do that in chapter 11 when we were importing data. Um, we can also use the helpers provided by Lubridate um, to create a date. Um, basically, all you have to do is figure out the order of the year, month, and day, and then use the letters Y, M, and D in the same order. <clears throat> so you can see we have the year, the month, the day. Um, and you also want to be sure if you are using that, um, that the date is in this format right here. The year is four digits, the month is two digits, and the day is two digits, because otherwise you will get a very weird date that is either really far in the past or really far in the future. <laughs> um, to create a date time, you can add an underscore and one or more of the letters H, M, and S to the above parsing functions. So we have the date and the time, and this creates it. Um, we're adding the UTC time zone. And let's see, what was I doing here? Oh, yeah, I was wondering if you can also create a time. Yes, you can. That's the HMS package that I mentioned earlier. Um, and one thing I found interesting is um, the time ends up being the class of a period. Is that, uh, is that normal? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so 
to be clear, um, period is what um, it's what Lubridate calls a certain type of time, but it's not ah, a base okay. R concept. It's a Lubridate specific concept. Okay. Um, I'm also, I'm 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 a little little surprised that that's a period. But I can't think of what else it would be. So I guess time. I don't know. Um, hmm. okay. Oh, that's why. Okay. So what it what you are what it's doing there when it doesn't have a date attached, and so it doesn't mm -hmm. know like where to put it. It's storing it as the length of time: sixteen hours, four minutes, and zero seconds. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That's so. That's what the period. Is. Right. Yes, which we will talk about in just right. a little bit. I would, I um, would be. I mean, okay, we'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. <laughs> you can also force the creation of a date time from a date by supplying a time zone. So, are you going to run? Uh oh. This is not running. Okay. Um, why is this not running? Um, it's like it's treating it like it's just an image. See what happens if you save. Ooh. Okay, let's see what happens if this. There we go. Okay, so um, it's, again, you can, uh, this is forcing the creation of a date time from a date um, just by adding the time zone. So it doesn't necessarily have to have a time attached to it, but the fact that it has a time zone attached to it it thinks it's a date time thing. <laughs> okay. Let's... Becky, how did you switch to this between the, the two different displays? Oh, so um, can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, so there's this little oh, thing up it. here. It's actually yeah. a easel I figured out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can switch between the two. Um, oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. so much better That's... than the no. <laughs> I forget that that exists because it's uh -huh. um, it's pretty much it's very new. So thank you for mm. having that moment to remind me. Oh right, this exists. <laughs> I'm still really new to R, so I'm like, oh, what does this do? And I keep right. clicking on things. So it's very good to do. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other way that we can create date time objects is from individual components. So if we have something like the New York City flights um, data set, we have columns or variables that have individual components of date times. So, oh man, this is, oh good, okay, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> um, so this, can't quite see it, so we'll just, can everybody see the new window that just opened? No. Oh, no. Okay. All right. I'm going to go back <laughs> to this. And... Vicky, can you make the font a little bit bigger? I'm not sure. I think <laughs> if, if you're a PC, Control Plus will do it, like a zoom in. Oh, is this? No, it's. Um, it is not, not in that view, not it within our studio. Uh, but oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, is that a little oh, bit? it should. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll zoom in once more. Is that better? Yes, that's okay. great. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so that's what we already did. Okay, so we have the um, flights data frame. And so we have the year, month, day, hour, and minute is um, separated out in that data frame. Um, and so for that, 
we can use make date or make date time and so you can see this little snippet of code we just selected these um, columns and then we created a new column called departure and it has it all smushed together excuse me i have to silence my phone <laughs> I never get tests and suddenly Saturday morning during the book group, it's going crazy. Okay, so um, we can use this to visualize both the distribution of departure times across the year and across the day, or that's the example that they do in the book. Um, but I'm not gonna go through that in order to try to save time. We can come back to it later if we like. Um, let's see if I can get this to work again. Okay, so all right, we can use date time as date time and as date. So um, we're just doing as date time now, and this is what time it is now. Um, and we can do as date now, and that only gives us the date. Um, so the example in the book uses today. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure what I was writing there. And for as date time. Oh, so as date time um, doesn't include the time, just the time zone. Um, oh, for now. If you use today, it doesn't include a time. Right. Because today is just the date. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't include the time, just the time zone. So, um, and also for date times as numeric offsets from the Unix epoch, um, it does a little bit of math. So, um, as date time, 36,000 seconds. Um, that is 10 a.m. on the 1st of January, 1970. And then we've added a year um, to that date time as well, or sorry, a decade. So we have 1980. Um, so that's how you create date times. We can also work with date times. Um, Just to, to interject real quick, the... Um... That date, uh, January 1st, 1970, it's good to know, like, get that in your head of, like, that's what Unix measures as basically the beginning of time. And then if you want before that, you use negative seconds to go before it. It's good to know that because if you have some data and all of the dates are January 1st, 1970, or they're like, you know, um, 10.30 p.m. on December 31st, 1969, chances are that's some value close to zero and then maybe it's like the the time zone sets different or something like that and it's just a zero and it's not really meant to be a time and so it's good to recognize if you see a bunch of january 1st 1970 or december 31st 1969 those are signs of something being weird in data um and it's worth taking another look to see okay is it really that day or is it that there was a zero that got converted into a day or into a time. Um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> Good to <Yeah>. know. <laughs> Again, I thought there was only going to be one little existential part of the <laughs> chapter. All right. So um, working with date times, um, sort of straightforward as far as the naming conventions. Um, we can extract components from them. We can pull out individual components with year, month. Um, this is day of the year, day of month, day of week, hour, minute, and second. Um, for month and day of the week, if you add the label equals true, it returns abbreviated names. And if you add abbreviation or ABBR equals false, that returns the full name. 
So you can remember that by F for false and full. And um, so you can see here we've created a date and just pulled out um, various uh, parts of it. And my question was when you're um, using this label, why does it list out all of the labels? Is it just being helpful and saying, well, here's your options? And it, can, can Sandra answer this? Does that look familiar? Because that's, it's from Sandra's chapter. It's the fact, it's a factor. And so Ooh. when you print a factor, it shows you all the levels of that factor. That's just how R prints mm -hmm. factors. Um, and it's helpfully making, you know, that month function is returning a factor because you really want it to be a factor when you're talking about a month. You don't want it to sort alphabetically, for example. You want it to be, you know, January, February, March, et cetera. You want it to, R to think of it as that somewhat numeric thing uh. that is a month. <laughs> oh, right. That's good to know. I guess I, yeah. I had forgotten. <laughs> All right. It's all making sense now. <laughs> um, Yay. <laughs> so um, day of the week um, in the book, they use that to see that more flights depart during the week than the weekend. Um, and they also use minute to look at the average departure delay by a minute within the hour versus scheduled departure times. And again, we can circle back and look at this later. Um, the author hypothesizes that humans like nice departure times. Um, it ended up looking like people liked to leave on the hour and on the half hour. Um, we can also round date time components. And I'm going to say up front, I didn't quite understand this section. Um, in the book, the authors say you can round a date to a nearby unit of time. So, for example, you can plot the number of flights per week. Um, like, why wouldn't you just count the number of flights per week? Um, or can you do that? I, I was a little confused. Um, it's to, you're trying to put it into a definitive week instead of you know, date. And so you're, you're using these functions oh, to like week number 42. Yeah. Now oh. you could do, um, there is a function to do that. So I'm trying to decide why you would do it with rounding. I don't think I would do that with rounding because that means if it's at the end of a week, it'll go into the next week. And that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> so... I was looking at it and um, oh, let's see if we can get the, oh, that won't work. All right. So I was looking at it. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Where am I? I'm lost. Okay. Um, the only thing, and, and oh, I mean, this might be wrong, but, um, is it so that you can more precisely bin what to include? You know what I mean? So if you have... No, but that would be the same, right? Because you could just set the end of the week to like a strict thing. And then any even one second over that would fall into the different bin later or something. So Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was looking, so floor date rounds down, ceiling date rounds up, and round date rounds two. And so I just took the first part of this. So there's round date is the first one. And so we have this first week is 12.30 and there's 12.04 uh, counts. And then uh, rounding up, we have the 6th of January and 4,300 count, which is rounded, um, which is a rounded count. And then we have December 30th with the same rounded count. Yeah, so they're was, showing it. very confused. <laughs> They show it as an alternative to using the components. So, for example, I, you know, I would use something like the, um, the, the what is it, week, you know, one of the week um, functions, yeah, Y day or W, not W day, just um, week. Um, 
that seems better, but the round is like giving you um, more control over how you want to move things. So you can say, I want the floor saying, I want the week that it, you know, that started before this date. You can say the ceiling for the week that started after this date, mm -hmm. different things like that. So the rounding gives you more control depending on what you're trying to do. I can't Still. off the top of my head, think of a reason to do that. Yeah. Um, well, this, this end count right here, the actual, um, number is 4312 or no sorry scratch that never mind i was thinking of something else um yeah and then the author says uh computing the difference between a rounded and unrounded date can be particularly useful and they did not say why <laughs> um you could do uh like how long after no i again i they so they have all the functions that make me not really want to use the round functions um yeah. because you know they have all the strictly defined week or um iso week or uh epi week or all these different like they have special week functions why would i mm -hmm. want to make my own up when they've got it um on different you know, different ways of um, determining the calendar. Um, so I don't have a good answer. I, okay. It was, this is one of those where I read the chapter and, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then you ask the question, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, it doesn't actually. Yeah. So, well, my first pass through, I'm like, oh, you can round. And then I started getting into it. I'm like, why? <laughs> I, I am sure that it is something I feel like it's something I've done, but I can't think of an, a case where it's useful. Um, okay. Well, it's there if you need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. um, maybe you need uh, to round the, a date because you need like uh, all, the, all the end of the months. Right. Or, hmm. And then you can round them. Um, uh, just rounded or if you have a specified type of rounding like you you need the the floor so the bottom side of the uh the date the floor or the white yeah. ceiling is it's like rounding up or down so you mm. you can do round you, it's you can do all, all round in general if you don't mind if it's up on the um, or down. So you, if you're rounding up, if you if instead if you need to rounding up a date, you can choose like floor, ceiling, or floor. I I think it's that. Yeah, like the week example isn't super example or super useful to me. I guess it's giving yeah. you the the date that that week starts on versus the week function gives you the number of the week in the year. Mm. so okay mm. i can see okay. that like yeah. you want to if you want to just consider anything that happened this week we're going to call that um december 5th for whatever whatever we need to do you know we want to only have it in periods of weeks i i could see you know um when i'm doing a book club setup um i think i probably have done some rounding where it's like oh people say that they can start at 11 30 i'm sorry i'm going to start that i'm going to count that as 11 because mm. I can't deal in half hours. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I could see that that kind of thing coming up where you only care about a less fine-grained um, unit than what the date actually has in it. You know, technically, you know, dates have, or, or I guess most dates are to seconds and you rarely care about seconds, you know, depending on what you're doing. But if you're like, hey, when should we meet? Um, I think we should meet at 12.32 and 52 seconds. Well, <laughs> that, okay, so you mean Sunday? <laughs> you know? That's so. a good point. Oh. Yeah, you get around it 60 six seconds, <laughs> yeah. one second. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So that, that example makes more sense, I guess, to me than the week. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can also set, let's see, hang on just a sec. 
Yes, okay. So we can also set individual date time components. So in addition to accessing time components, you can use the functions to set up or to set the components of a date time. Or you can create a new date time with the update function, which takes multiple arguments. Um, but do note if the values are too big, they will roll over um, like into the next day. So um, you can see here, we've just created some date times. Um, and we've also done a little bit of arithmetic. Uh, or sorry, updated the date time. So um, we've changed the year to 2020, we've changed the month to the first, and then we've added some hours to the time. Um, and then using the update function, we can just do all of that all at once. Um, so um, the example that they have in the book, for rolling over was um, this one, they, February 1st, 2015, they added 30 days and it rolled over into March 2nd. And then the leap year um, in 2016, I just added 30 and it rolled over to March 1st. So be aware of that. Um, and then in the book, they use the example of showing distribution of flights across the course of a day for each day of the year using the update function. And again, if we have time, we can come back to that. So you can also perform arithmetic on time spans. Um, you can perform arithmetic with dates, including subtraction and addition for most of them. And in some cases you can use division and multiplication. Um, there are three important classes of time spans. There's durations, which is an exact number of seconds. There's periods, which are human units like weeks and months. Um, this didn't make sense to me because I was like, aren't all units of time human units? But uh, I figured out a better way to say that in a little bit, and okay. I will go over that. Yep. Um, and then we have intervals, which have a starting and end point. So uh, durations to use durations to measure exact number of seconds. Um, so when you subtract two dates, you get a diff time object. And a diff time object records spans of seconds, minutes, hours, days, or weeks. Uh, Liberty has a class that always uses seconds and that is duration. So uh, the author <laughs> had an example of uh, how old they might be. Um, and so you can see there's a time difference when we've subtracted today minus their birth date of uh, this many days. Um, but the duration actually Yes, the as duration gives us um, the seconds, but it also helpfully kind of gives us an approximation of how many years that might be. Um, durations come with constructors. It's, um, again, they're pretty intuitive, but you stick a D at the front of them for duration. And so uh, we have 15 seconds. Um, again, it, kind of gives us this nice approximation of how many seconds these might be. Um, so we have hours and weeks. Um, so durations record time and time spans in seconds. Um, and to, but to create the larger units, like the minutes and hours, um, they do convert at a standard rate. So like 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, et cetera. Um, however, not all of those intervals are those values in every case. Um, sometimes we have daylight savings. Um, again, because the earth is slowing down, sometimes we have leap seconds and leap years. Uh, you can perform arithmetic with durations. Um, usually you can use a 
right? I think in all cases, you can use a number um, for multiplication, but I'm not sure that you can really multiply uh, two dates. So we have a duration that we of one year that we multiply by two, it give us a second plus the uh, approximation. Um, we can add. So we've got um, years plus weeks plus hours. And again, it gave us an approximation of years. Um, we can add a duration of a day to today. So that, yes, that is tomorrow. <laughs> um, so last year, so it's saying today minus a duration of a year. Um, let's see, and when I did that yesterday, okay, yes, it's, it's right today. <laughs> um, and then you have daylight savings time. So we've again created an object, or yeah, that's an object, right? <laughs> um, so we've created a time with a time zone and it's the American uh, time zone in New York in America. But then we've added a, a duration of a day to it and you can see that the time zone has changed um, and the time is not the same time the next day. And that is because of the daylight savings. That's my favorite pet peeve uh, or whatever, <laughs> a thing that drives me crazy when people talk about something in the summer and they include the time zone as EST because they think it means just, you know, the, the time Eastern of Standard this, time. Yeah, yeah, that it's the time zone of Eastern time. It's like, no, it, it means not daylight savings. <laughs> and so if you say EST, you can't say you're, we're going to meet at 11 o'clock EST in June. There is no EST in June. It's mm. EDT. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know what you mean, but it's <laughs> <laughs> as someone who has had to wrestle against uh, time zone issues before, I, I want people to understand the differences and <laughs> the, the problems that they're introducing. Yes. One, one second. I have a question on that, Becky. Um, sure. So when you, you're creating this date, right? So 2016, and that's March 12th. Oh, uh, duh. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So then a day would be, that's with the start of daylight savings, correct? Or the so end of daylight savings? That would be the at 2 start. 2 a.m.? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. I was reading okay. that as Peruvian time and I was like, December, <laughs> why would it give you a different thing? So sorry. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, periods are used to measure human units like weeks and months. Um, and so periods help us avoid problems like the daylight savings time one above. <laughs> um, and they work in a more intuitive to humans way. And that's, that's the phrase that makes sense to me. Um, and the constructors, again, are um, pretty straightforward. And uh, period, yeah, it's periods are the same as durations without the preceding D. So we have same examples as we did above, but we get uh, different answers. So we have 15 seconds. We have uh, 12 hours and 24 hours that look very different than what we got up here. Um, and then we have three weeks is 21 days. Um, you can perform arithmetic on periods as well with more expected DST results. So you can see it's just, it looks different than above, um, but it also did really well in the daylight savings time. And so the authors in the book use periods to fix the um, New York City flights, overnight flights that look like they arrive before they depart um, by adding a period of a day to the arrival time for each overnight flight. Um, again, we can come back to that. Uh, intervals 
um, can be used to represent time spans with exact start and end date times. So you can use arithmetic with durations, but again, sometimes the durations are not what you'd expect. So instead use an interval. Um, and do you use intervals because you specifically want a date time object? Um, it's so they they have these interval this interval class to kind of help you take care of some of the things that date times um, that natively R isn't friendly with. <laughs> and so the interval is, um, you know, it, uh, I almost said a period. It's a time span <laughs> <laughs> between specific start and end times versus like a diff time is just the difference. It doesn't, you know, you can put a diff time at, at starting and ending at any point in time, mm -hmm. but an interval is like, an exact it's this interval of time this um oh it's between like these specific dates yes right i'm not remembering <laughs> right uh make sure that i'm not saying incorrect things um where are you intervals yeah sorry yeah so specifically yes intervals are uh, between start and end points. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, the example that they had in the book, I was a little confused. I understand um, dividing the duration of a year by the duration of 365 days will not quite give you um, like a nice one, but I'm not, I was really confused by this syntax here, the percent dash dash percent, is that like, is that the duration syntax? It's actually base R, let's see. I, I Googled it and oh, it, it is not a, come up with anything. That is, okay, that is a, a Liberdate invention. And huh. it is a, um, it's just a way of saying, uh, like, integer um, subtraction. So it's a special subtract. Um, That's only specific to Luberdate, though, correct? Yes. Okay. I was thinking it was a, a standard thing that they co-opted, but it's not. It is a, and when they say integer there, they really mean, you know, like um, integer in time periods. So either integer seconds or an integer days or an integer weeks, whatever makes sense in the context that you're working with. Um, so if we look at the, you know, we're subtracting um, from next year. Um, I don't know why it matters here, actually. <laughs> so what happens? <laughs> let me let me try this. So um, next year is today plus years one. Okay. Next year is today plus years one. So next year is just a date, and today is just a date. So if we do today minus just normal minus next year, and that whole thing divided by oops, days one. Um, so that should be a year divided by the duration of. Oh, <laughs> it's so confusing. Flips the sign, but it kind of flip should flip the sign. Um. Again, this whole chapter made sense until you start asking questions. And then I'm like, wait. <laughs> um, it's weird because it's why why would you do today minus next year? Like obviously that's negative. I, I don't negative know. Throw. Like <laughs> You're putting the first one first. So next year minus today. 
um it, I, so i guess it's just doing like a um trying to find the actual like definition of what percent minus minus is or percent minus minus percent um uh, which is very interesting because it came up with uh, 365 days which is quite a rounded number so there is not right yeah so like today to the next year divided by the duration of days just one day I don't know one so the if I mean, I'm it's... remembering what I've said correctly the duration of a day is going to be in seconds Oops, let's see yeah that's okay Okay, yeah, the minus minus is just a, it creates a period. So okay. that's what it is, is it's saying you put the, the start date on the left and the end date on the right, or the start, oh. start, you know, date time on the left and the end date time on the right. In this case, we're doing a date and a date. So we're saying the period between today and this day next year. That's what that dash dash is. Okay, that yeah, makes a lot more sense. That makes it so much, make it, yeah. It's um, basically the way I figured out what the heck was going on here was get rid of the divided by days. Um, and you can see what it creates is this object that just is date dash dash date. And that's a period. It's, uh, here, let me throw class around that. And yeah, it is uh, an inter interval, excuse me, not a period. I kept saying period, it's an <laughs> interval. Okay, that's... Um, I between you said interval, and I was like, "Did I hear period?" <laughs> yeah, I okay. So that's that's your constructor for making an interval, and then divided by the number of days in that interval, and it tells you, "Okay, there are 365 days in that interval." Okay. Um, yeah, I tried this with. <clears throat> days as well as your the duration of a day and it works both ways <laughs> um and so there's this handy chart that shows you what you can uh the arithmetic that you can perform with these different um date time uh objects and am i i'm pretty sure this is right but you say you take a date time and you can subtract a duration from it or can you use the chart both ways? I think you, I think it's okay, duration divided by, or interval divided by a duration, but can you divide a duration by an interval? So you can only use the chart one way, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so finally, um, we'll talk a little bit about time zones. Um, the problems with time zones, um, the names, there's a lot of different names for time zones. Um, the time zone is only printed or displayed, um, and it also defaults to UTC, which is Coordinated Universal Time. Um, for names, R uses Internet Assigned Numbers Authority time zones because they use a consistent naming scheme. Um, you can get a complete list with Olson names. Um, and they're in the format where it's like country slash city, like this. Um, so I'm in the Los Angeles time zone. Um, in R, the time zone is an attribute of the date time that only controls printing. So you can see these uh, dates that have different times are displayed as dates with different times, but if you subtract them, you can see that they are the same time because there is no uh, difference. So UTC is the standard time zone used by the scientific community, and it doesn't have daylight savings time, which makes computation easier. Um, you can change time zones two ways. 
you can keep the time zone or you can keep the time. Oh, wow. You can keep the time zone the, the same and change how it's displayed with, with TZ, or you can change the time zone when you have an incorrect one and you need to fix it with force TZ. And I need to fix that above sentence. Um, so you can see uh, we've created some, a concatenation of times here. And um, you should note that concatenating the times will often drop the time zones um, and they'll display a local time. However, this one uh, just kept the America, New York one that's first in the list. So we have a bunch of the same dates and time. So we'll just look at the first. So um, we, let's see, what did we do? The time zone. Okay, so with the time zone, using the New Zealand one in the book, it's got a difference of 10 hours and 30 minutes. Um, but you can see it's still the same time because when we subtract the times, the difference is zero. And with the force TZ, we are keeping the same time, but we're changing the time zone. And you can see the difference is uh, 14 and a half hours. So that thankfully is it for time. <laughs> Um, yeah, this was a much more challenging chapter than I expected. The time is, it's crazy. Um, yeah. So I have a whole, uh, for work, you know, we have to deal with times a lot. And uh, we have like a whole thing that I wrote to make sure that our stuff always gets put into the time zones that we're working in so that we like aren't accidentally doing things in the wrong place. And, oh, it, this is, you know, this will happen at noon today. Oh, sorry, I'm at noon Pacific. And in doing all that, I found there was a time zone that's actually in R, in the Olson names list. It's uh, America slash Pacific New. That time zone doesn't exist. It was created by legislation and then never signed into law. So it passed through the House and Senate, but the, it was never signed. And so it's in there as if it's a time zone but it has never actually been like real. The only reason it would be there is, you know, what would the time be if this time zone were real basically? And so like just little things like that, there are so many. And if you did, like, I just um, went through and filtered just to find all the ones that all the time zones that are um, there that have America in the name. And there are 167 of them. And we actually use six ish <laughs> like and there's some complications because like arizona has several time zones depending on like where exactly you are whether you're um on a like a reservation within arizona at a certain certain time of the year there's all these weird things um but it's it's crazy, and that's why this package exists. And actually, there's also another package. I think it's Clocks that is kind of like a redo redo of Lubridate to make things even more complicated. Um, yeah, times are hard. Like, there's a whole section in the time zones for Indiana because every city in Indiana had a different time zone for a while there. Uh, <laughs> Has anybody ran into the thirty minute uh, uh, difference in Australian time? Uh, I don't know if anybody uh, works with anybody in Australia, but uh, there's a there's a 30 minute offset in one area, and you always have to take that into account, especially if you're scheduling meetings, uh, because they're going to have this weird 30 minute interval that you have to take uh, into India. account as well. India is also India does half as well. Hour. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the the last example we had. The Lord Howe. It's um, yeah. Their offset is 10 hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> surprised to see that um interesting why is that it's they um 
they use one time zone for either the whole country or a lot of it, and they like choose one that's the least wrong, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, I I just had to check because I couldn't remember if they had done this, but for um, so Newfoundland, Canada, is a half hour time zone, mm-hmm. and it used to be until not that long ago, it was like a thirty five minute because it's where the sun rises in North America and they uh-huh. would set their time by sunrise. And oh. so they're like, no, we're not going to listen to your stupid time zones. Cause this is where the, the time gets set. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, so there are all these things like so many things are crazy. Uh, I grew mm-hmm. up in Michigan, which is in the wrong time zone because when they standardized the time zones, they had just built built the uh, Erie Canal and they wanted New York and Detroit they wanted that Buffalo and Detroit to be on the same time zone because they had just synchronized everything Um, and so Michigan's in eastern time but it like the line goes up and then cuts over around Michigan Um, so all these like everything's wrong with time zones Uh, I wish we could find a better way to deal with things and then like people like to joke of and then we'll colonize mars and yeah we'll we'll get it all figured out and then we'll colonize mars and the day's almost the same length but not quite <laughs> and then, what do we do then like well, i uh, thought you were saying that colonizing mars would be easier than figuring oh, out the date times <laughs> well, well maybe <laughs> but the i can't remember the day on mars is um surprisingly close uh yeah, it's one day, zero hours, and 37 minutes. And so if we had a colony on Mars, it'd be almost the same time, but not quite. And it would get off further and further every day. So uh, the other one that just blows my mind is when there's a really bad, like a massive mm. earthquake, um, that will change the length of a day because a bunch of land is going under and it's as if the Earth is pulling its arms in so it speeds up a little bit um mm-hmm. <laughs> and so like whenever there's a really bad tsunami or you know that kind of thing uh chances are we will have uh well what it does usually is it makes us not need a leap second for a little while longer because it makes the day a little bit shorter um whereas the day otherwise would be getting longer um and so it, it throws things off just from having a global event they're saying um Global warming is also making the days a little uh, shorter because all of the glaciers are going down to sea level. And so that's as if the earth is pulling in its arms, speeding up a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Like a skate, you know, that reference being like a skate, ice skater, when they pull in their arms, they swim, spin, spin faster. So that makes the day shorter if the earth is doing that. Um, is it counterbalancing the earth slowing down that they mentioned at the beginning of the chapter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there are a lot of those. And I looked it up. Uh, dinosaurs had roughly a 23 hour day and a 335 day year. So I didn't even, I didn't realize that the length of the year is also changing. Um, so all these things, times are complicated. That's the main thing to take away from this chapter. And Lubridate has things in it to deal with it. So if you're ever running into something weird, like Lucas has the example of um, get rid of, uh, you know, I could imagine like getting rid of time zones in patient Mm -hmm. data because time zones, especially if they're on a reservation in Arizona, that can be very revealing of who this person is. Mm -hmm. And so you want to remove that to uh, de-identify people. Yeah, there's so many things. my company, some of our first testers when I worked for a startup were at universities in Arizona. And so I got very much taught, um, like we would have people choose their time zone when they're creating their account. And then we had to figure out, oh God, we need to do this better because they're all choosing the wrong time zone because they don't know what time zone they're in. <laughs> and so, uh, which would make all this, the dates look wrong of when is this thing due? Well, you said you were in uh mountain time but you're not quite in mountain time you're in arizona time so (laughs) 
Unless depends. I don't know. They change every once in a while. Such a mess. Um, that's the other thing is all the time zone things have. When did this go into effect? Is part of the time zone setting because like the laws change every once in a while of when does daylight savings start, for example, and so depending what year it was, not only like is it a different date that it starts on, but it's a different rule to determine what the date is that the daylight mm -hmm. savings starts on. So lots of craziness. Yeah, nice. yeah, definitely. Given that it was time, it was going to get into existential type things and how we <laughs> defined it, right? And really what time means. <laughs> yeah. Great job, Vicky.